JBN we keep you informed coming up in the news man dead is son hospitalized following bizarre incident in St. James man murdered on King Street downtown Kingston charge against district constable in relation to bomb threats dismissed man dies after vehicle overturns in Raya Cobra. George Knox might sue for false arrest two held after cops seized guns and two guns in Carindon cabinet maker phone dead at home in Trelawney and Crawford helping Portland students to find right CSEC formula. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. Man dead, son hospitalized following bizarre incident in St. James. A man is dead while his eight year old son has been admitted to hospital with stab wounds following an incident at their house in Comfort All St. James on Tuesday morning. He has been identified as 56-year-old taxi operator Donovan Thompson. Thompson was shot by the police when a team went to arrest him shortly after midnight. According to information received, Thompson was being investigated in relation to an alleged sexual assault. Comfort Hall resident Pete Williams said Thompson barricaded himself inside the house, threatening to kill himself and his son. Members of the community tried to encourage him to open the door to the house, however he did not respond. During those hours of negotiation, Mr. Thompson reportedly stabbed his son several times. Prior to that, he turned on a gas stove and with a lighter in hand, threatened to blow the house up. Firefighters had to turn their hose on the house to prevent a disaster. The police also used a tranquilizer gun on Thompson in an attempt to calm him. However, that was to no avail. They eventually shot him through a broken window. A fellow taxi operator who gave his name as Stafford said the incident has left him shaken. Man murdered on King Street, downtown Kingston. The man who was shot dead on King Street in downtown Kingston yesterday afternoon has been identified as 41-year-old Jermaine Rutherford, a laborer of Tower Street, Kingston. According to reports, Rutherford was sitting in a bucket about 3.45 p.m. when he was allegedly approached by a lone gunman who opened fire, eating him several times. A female in close proximity to the, to the incident was shot and injured, police said. Both were taken to the hospital where Rutherford was pronounced dead and the female was admitted for treatment. Investigations continue. Charge against District Constable in relation to bomb threats dismissed. District Constable Jason Williams, who was arrested last year in relation to a series of bomb threats which disrupted court sittings in downtown Kingston, was freed of the charge on Monday morning when he appeared before the St. Andrew Parish Court. Williams and businessman Carter Clark of Top Town in Clarkson, Trelawney were charged with creating public mischief. The district constable was freed after the prosecution decided not to pursue the case against him. He had been in custody since January. His attorney, Vincent Willesley, said there was no evidence linking his client to the bomb threats. I made the submission again, telling the judge that there was no nexus between Mr. Williams and the call which was allegedly made. The judge agreed with me and the learned clerk of court reluctantly offered no evidence against Williams, he said. He said that from the inception, there was no evidence against his client. He attributed the decision to charge his client in the first place to public hysteria, caused by the fact that the bomb threats were directed at court buildings. The Crown must discontinue this bad practice of using hysteria and trying to please the public by charging people, he declared. It is unclear what happened in the matter involving the businessman. Man dies after vehicle overturns in Raya Cobra. A man died Tuesday morning after his vehicle overturned in the Raya Cobra, close to Bog Walk in St. Catherine. His identity has not been released. The circumstances which led to the incident are not yet known. Sergeant David Barnes, head of traffic for the St. Catherine North Police Division, said passers-by notified the police about the vehicle in the river about 4.55. The vehicle was retrieved and the body of the man was found. The police are unclear whether there were other occupants inside the vehicle before it was submerged. George Knox might sue for false arrest. Tom Tavares Finson, attorney at law, representing singer George Knox, says his client is looking to sue the police for false arrest. According to the high-profile lawyer, Nox is considering legal action for an alleged incident last weekend. The police arrested him on Friday and took him to the narcotics police on Spanish Town Road. They said he had swallowed some substance and took him to the Kingston Public Hospital where they had him until his release on Sunday 
Tom Tavares said yesterday. He said his client was not charged for the alleged incident which took place at Ligony Plaza in St. Andrew. Mr. Nooks is very disturbed by the incident, Tavares Finson said. He, however, left on tour for Barbados today. Up to yesterday afternoon, the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Information Arm, the Corporate Communications Unit, had no record of the incident. This is not the first time Nooks and the law have crossed paths. In 2017, he was charged with possession of cocaine. That case is still before the court. Nooks burst on the entertainment scene in the 1970s as Rastafarian DJ Prince Mohammed. His hit songs, the producer Joe Gibbs, include Tribal War as George Nooks and Forty Leg Dread. His singing was inspired by Dennis Brown's mentor, whom he paid tribute to in Dennis Brown tribute album, and Dennis Brown and George Nooks sing love songs. After a decade-long absence from the charts, Nooks wrote back in 2001 with God is Standing By, a cover of Al Green's gospel hit of the same name. He has been a popular live and recording act since. Two held after cops seized ganja and two guns in Clarendon. Two people have been arrested in connection with yesterday's seizure of two firearms and a quantity of ganja in Portland Cottage, Clarendon. The police said the items, which include an Intratex submachine gun, a Bryker Point 38 firearm, 147 assorted rounds of ammunition, two magazines, and 900 pounds of ganja were found at the premises during an operation about 5.30 a.m. The ganja is an estimated street value of $4.5 million. The identities of the man and woman in custody have been withheld until charges are laid. Cabinet maker found dead at home in Trelawney. The Trelawney police are probing the death of a cabinet maker whose body was found at his home in the parish on Friday morning. The deceased has been identified as 50-year-old Lloyd Emmons of Lockwood Valley, Duncan Trelawney. Reports are that about 6.05 a.m., family members discovered Emmons' body at his house lying in a pool of blood. The police were called and the body was removed to the morgue after the scene was processed. The nature of the injury which led to Heman's death is still unclear. Crawford helped Portland students to find right CSEC formula. Opposition Senator and People's National Party PMP caretaker for Eastern Portland, Damien Crawford, devoted his time on the weekend to teach dozens of students from different high schools in the parish who are prepared to sit mathematics in the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC examinations. Dressed in a grey t-shirt and red sweatpants, the dreadlocked politician made his first stop at Titchfield High School before heading to Port Antonio High School. Knowledge is the only thing you can share and still have it, commented Crawford. Based on the love that the people have shown me here and the appreciation and acceptance, I decided that I would show some gratitude by doing the classes here as well. Right now, the response has been good as there were over 100 kids in attendance at Titchfield, while more than 60 students turned out at the Port Antonio High School. Crawford, noting that math is much feared among students nationally, said the subject is easy but has to be simplified to help students understand the concepts. He said that there are many students who acquire four or five subjects but are unable to attend university or pursue certain programs as they struggle to find a successful formula to ace the subject. Crawford, who was unsuccessful in his bid to become Member of Parliament for East Portland earlier this month, said his maths carnival will continue this week. I'll be teaching maths at Happy Grove and Fair Prospect High later this week. All of Section 2, including functions and relations, geometry and trigonometry, which usually create challenges. But we're also trying to give all the tricks of the trade for the multiple choice exam so that they can do it without a calculator. That's one of the difficulties that technology has created for most. He said that part of the plan is to also build greater awareness among students about how math shapes everyday life. The usual cry from students is, how does this apply to my life? And it does apply to their life. Half of a bread is a fraction. When I can see people down the line who have assisted, police, teachers and lawyers, the feeling is great. I am a firm believer in education, which is the only vehicle to alleviate poverty. Crawford concluded, I am hoping to have better grades from students in CSEC math at the end of it all. Crawford, who lectures in marketing and tourism management at the University of the West Indies Mona, previously taught mathematics at St. George's College and Norman Manley High School. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell 
to receive or daily news items.